Hi guys, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I'm an endocrinologist at Diabetes Expert and today I am talking about the most common diabetes myths. So we're going to do some fact check today. Let's get started. Well, first myth is guys, the diabetics cannot eat carbs. Well, that's a total BS because I'm a diabetes expert. I see a lot of patients with diabetes and all of my patients eat carbs and they're just fine. Their A1C is under control because they just do the right things. Now, you guys are probably watching this chiropractors or holistic doctors or uh, integrative doctors. Since they don't have any other really talent to practice, and all they know is diet, they're gonna tell you just stop eating carbs and diabetes will go away. Well, it's easier said than done, and that's a myth. So your diabetes can still go away, your diabetes can still be under perfect control as long as you do the right things. Now, I'm not gonna go over everything about you know what to do, uh, but if you're eating the right foods, the whole foods, if you're exercising, if, you're, if you have a coach that teaches you what to do, if you're taking some herbal remedies, uh, you should be able to handle that within reason without having to put yourself through the hell and trying to go totally carbohydrate free. The number two is only fat people get type 2 diabetes. Well, that's a huge mistake. I'll tell you, at least 20% of people with type 2 diabetes are either normal weight or they are actually underweight. So, again, what people don't understand is it's not just a food problem or just a being fat problem. It is a complicated problem that is about supply and demand issue. So if your body is not making enough insulin, even if you are not overweight, and if it is in your genes, you may still develop type 2 diabetes. So don't beat yourself up too much. It is okay, it's very charitable, but don't consider yourself fat even if you're normal weight. The next myth, people commonly search this, the diabetic people should eat diabetic food. Well, don't alienate yourself. It's not like, uh, you know, pets should eat pet food. Uh, it's like diabetics should eat diabetic food. Come on, it doesn't work like that. Diabetic people can eat any food just like any other people as long as it's healthy and it's wholesome. So we need to have whole foods in our diet, but you don't have to label yourself diabetic and go spend your money on what's called diabetic food. When something called diabetic or low sugar or no sugar, then suddenly price doubles up. Don't do that. Stick with the whole foods, guys. The next myth is diabetics go blind and lose their legs. Well, not in my practice. Guys, so diabetics will go blind or will lose, will lose their leg if they have diabetes for a long time and if it is uncontrolled. So in this day and age, you have so many resources to control your diabetes. That, that will be your diet, that will be your exercise, if necessary medications or herbal supplements. You can do so well that diabetes will not even touch you. So you can have diabetes as much as you want, but you will be perfectly healthy. Now, another tip is you have to worry about your blood pressure and cholesterol as well, because unfortunately, a lot of diabetics die from heart attacks and strokes way before they get a chance to develop blindness or leg amputations. Just saying. The guys, next funny myth is diabetics are terrible drivers. Well, <laughs> that's really not true. Well, if, if people think that diabetics get low blood sugar all the time, well, they shouldn't. If they are taking certain medications excessively like glupazide or sulfonylureas and um, the insulin, you name it, uh, and if they're not monitoring their blood sugars, yeah, that can be the case. But just because you're diabetic doesn't make you a dangerous driver. If you're monitoring your blood sugars, if you're eating the right food, and if you're on top of it, if you're not taking medications that can cause severe low blood sugars, then you should be just fine. So, scratch that away too. Well, what about sports? You can be type 1 diabetic or type 2 diabetic, and people may come and tell you, 
Hey, dude, you're diabetic. You can't do sports. You can't do anything. You know, you can't do any competitive sports. That's not true. I know bodybuilders. I know marathon runners with diabetes. As long as you know how to manage your blood sugars when you're exercising, and as long as you are on the right path, you are being coached, you have a good doctor, you have, you're on the right medications if necessary, and you know what you're doing, you're monitoring your blood sugars. There's so many blood sugar monitoring tools nowadays you will not have any problem maintaining your blood sugar at a normal range even if you are doing competitive sports. Now, the next myth is that diabetics cannot do anything right. Well, that's a huge BS as well. And I get a lot of these letters from employers that are trying to treat them as if, you know, they're useless. Well, that's not true. Uh, they are actually one of the best employees because they care about themselves. They monitor their blood sugars. They eat right. They care about their health. As long as you have diabetes and you do all that, there is no reason for your productivity to go down. And you can prove that to your employer actually by being best at your work. You can maintain your blood sugars in a very tight range. There's so many improvements in technology and medications and coaching. There is nothing impossible. There's nothing that can take you down in your productivity nowadays. And and finally, remind them that actually uh, there is something called Disability Act in the United States and they cannot discriminate you uh, just because you have diabetes. You have every right to go after them. And the next one is they think that the diabetics are more likely to catch infections like COVID-19 or, or pneumonia or whatever. They're actually not more likely to catch an infection. They're just, if they're uncontrolled, they're more likely to have complications from an infection. But they're just as likely as anybody else to catch the infection. Especially when it comes to viruses and bacteria, they're just as likely. It's just their immune system is, is a little bit weaker. If, you, if, if they are not under control, um, then they may have more complications with it. But definitely they're not more likely to catch the infection more often than others. Okay guys, I should have said this probably in the beginning, but uh, there's also a common myth that eating sugar causes diabetes. Well, there's no evidence for that. The reason people get diabetes is it's in their genetic background, but also not just they're eating sugar, they're eating too much sugar and they are not burning that sugar. If you're an athlete, if you're lifting weights, if you are sprinting, you know, this high intensity workouts, Dude, you need carbs. You need to have sugar in your system. You cannot just eat red meat and just go take a marathon. Good luck with that. Your muscles are running on the glycogen, which is composed of glucose. So that the reason people get diabetes is not because they eat sugar, just because they eat sugar and just sit on the couch. That's the problem. And the final myth, guys, is the supplements do not work. Well, the problem with supplements, there's so many of them. So as a consumer, you don't really know what to trust. And a lot of companies out there just to make money but there are a few companies out there with passion now my passion is to help you guys so I have investigated all sorts of herbs and we came up with our own supplement and in my practice I see that every day that people are saying doc what is in this it's like works so well well guess what guys this is what we have and I'm sure you know most of you are on it already but we improved the formula recently and this is our new product new label and that product really, I mean, you take two with each meal. It's a dietary supplement, so you take this with each meal. It's going to improve your insulin resistance. It's going to help you make insulin when you need it. And it's going to reduce the inflammation in your body. So if you are wanting to go for a supplement route, so try this. And it is okay to investigate and research what is in it, what you're buying, and how effective they can be. Uh, most of the time, the problem with the supplements, they don't necessarily work as much as you want uh, if you're using only one substance. You may not know exactly how much dose to take. You may not know what combination to take. So I came up with this supplement for you guys. And check that out and let me know what you think. Remember to like, remember to share, and we'll see you in the next video. All right, thank you for watching, and I want you to be more informed and more educated. So to do that, go ahead and watch this next video right here.